Hi everybody, Matt Johnson here from Primary Vision. I'm jumping in for Mark Rosano, who's out this week. Let's get into the frack spread count. Uh, the number for the week is 130. This is an improvement of plus 15 week over week. And we've definitely seen a lot of activity uh, across the lower 48 here. Definitely marked by uh, the Permian Basin, which is you know definitely approaching 50 uh, through uh, Q3 into Q4. This is definitely something we've seen um, the frack spread count improve upon here over the last uh, couple months as this is really a part of the planned completion cycles programs by operators as they look to knock out ducks, focus on the managing the recline curves. Uh, let's move into the last three months. Uh, we can see here definitely, like I said, plus 41 uh, over just a handful of weeks here, uh, you know, an improvement from uh, a COVID-related uh, spring. And then uh, the frack spread count year over year, you can see we're definitely seeing that uptick. Uh, October, as you can see, the trend line year over year, there definitely is this little bit of a, uh, a just a, a slight adjustment here as operators, again, look to, uh, you know, their planned completion cycles, planned completion programs. Um, so this is pretty good. Uh, activity measurement here, something a little bit higher than primary vision has been forecasting. We've been kind of thinking along the way that uh, we would hover in this range of 110 to 130 spreads as we push through into Q4. Uh, but it looks like the rig count is a big driver uh, of the frack spread count now. Uh, although they don't correlate all the times or sometimes it's a little bit heavier weighted. So something to note here as we move throughout the rest of the year, watch for those rig counts from Baker Hughes and some of your other favorite drilling data providers and see where those activity levels are moving. If they keep moving north, probably going to see the frack spread count move north. If you see them kind of get static, that'll probably be a good sign for us to walk out the rest of the year. Obviously, we're driven by WTI as well. So uh, something this week was uh, we were up and down uh, as inventories are being challenged. So, uh, you know, Mark will go over that a lot on the EIA show too. A couple updates here on Schlumberger to round out the show here today. Uh, Schlumberger and the Liberty merger are definitely on track at this point. Uh, this is exciting news for the oil field services sector as uh, we look to see improvement there um, as a lot of consolidation is happening. Obviously, there's been some bankruptcies. Uh, we're getting calls from a variety of companies that are looking for equipment or looking to sell equipment um, as the market's improving just slightly. Uh, you know, we're definitely going to see uh, more uh, of this consolidation as we move forward, and we're encouraging signs here from Schlumberger and Liberty as they look to close that out. Uh, Schlumberger did report that they had a 50% increase in activity from Q2 to Q3. Uh, we've definitely seen the same forecast line along the way. Uh, I think they probably were a little bit uh, more uh, ambitious than we were for Q3 and Q4, but look, it's catching up with itself as we uh, hover here to the um, 130 to 150 important uh, numbers here as we look to manage decline curves going out of 2020. And wrapping up for the week, uh, as you can see, the schedule was a little bit different this week. As a result of Columbus Day, we had the economy released on Wednesday, an OPEC update yesterday, and the EIA update, which came out this morning. Next week, we'll get back to our regular schedule, which is EIA on Wednesday, Thursday, the economy, and Friday, the frack spread count. Thanks for joining this week. Mark will return next week with his regular schedule. Enjoy your weekend, and thanks for watching the Primary Vision frack spread count. This is Matt Johnson from Primary Vision. Primary Vision.